Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the talk on Arduino with Near Field Communication. Um, we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be using the Near Field uh, Communication Shields from both Adafruit and Seed Studio. We're going to be using them on an Arduino Uno. Uh, before we get into that, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background about what Near Field Communication is. Um, there's a lot of, uh, oh, hold on, i got to get my other set of tags here. <sighs> There's going to be a lot of information. Um, all these slides will be online, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, I brought the right NFC tags. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'll have some time for questions afterwards. So some of the theory hopefully will sink in, but if you don't understand it all, hopefully it'll become clearer when we go through the examples. So what is NFC? NFC stands for Near Field Communication. It's similar to RFID. Um, it's actually a subset of RFID, which is Radio Frequency ID. RFID is used in things like the Easy Pass for your tolls. RFID works over a much greater distance. Near Field Communication is like four to 20 centimeters. Um, in reality, a lot of times, you're actually taking a tag and you're putting it directly in contact with something. Um, so what can you do with uh, NFC? You can do mobile payments if you have Google Wallet and Android phone. You can share data between phones. If you have uh, like a web page open, you can put two phones together and share them. Um, I went to a conference this year, and they had uh, an NFC tag embedded into the conference badge, so you could scan people's badges to get their information. Uh, there's some hardware that's Bluetooth, like speakers and stuff like that. It comes with a near-field communication tag, so you can uh, Hold your phone on there, and it'll pair with the device. Uh, some mass transit systems use NFC also. And uh, occasionally, you see smart poster ads. They were supposed to be a lot bigger. They haven't really, uh, they haven't really taken off. But uh, my most fun thing to do is hack stuff. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today, is how can you use it to incorporate NFC into your projects? So the first thing you need with NFC is uh, there's devices. Those devices can be phones. They can be dedicated readers. They can be things like this shield on this NFC. And then you need tags. And there's lots of different kinds of tags. Uh, here's a picture of some of the different ones. I'm using these cards here today. There's a Kickstarter project where they have an NFC ring. So there's actually a ring with two NFC tags uh, in it. So there's all kinds of different things. And the big difference is a uh, device is a powered. It has a chip in, computer chip in there, and it has an antenna. It's sending out some, uh, it's se sending a signal out. And then in the card, there's another antenna, which gets that signal, powers a chip, and sends data back. The thing to think about with these tags, they hold a tiny amount of data. This right here holds 1K of data. And uh, by the time it's formatted, you get 716 bytes. And that's a pretty big tag. Um, I have some smaller tags that by the time they're formatted, you get 39 bytes to read and write data on there. Um, there are some tags that go up to 4K, but in general, you're dealing with very small amounts of data. So today, we're going to be using these tags are called MyFair Classic tags. Um, they're not officially an NFC tag, but they um, they behave like an NFC forum tag. There's also four other kinds of uh, tags. There are types one through four. The details of those aren't that important now. Um, one of the limitations with the Arduino software is it will only read and write MyFair Classic tags, and it will read um, MyFair Ultralight tags. The phones, on the other hand, read and write a lot more. So one of the tags is these Samsung Tech Tiles. You can buy these in the, in the store. Um, they're MyFair Classic if you get the original ones. The newer ones, because the newer Samsung phones use a Type 4 tag. But among all those tag types, there's a lot of common things. They all have unique IDs. They have types, technologies, capacity, a whole bunch of properties about them. And then each tag type, it's storing the data different. There's proprietary formats. There's different security features and there's different ways to read and write them. So it's kind of a mess there. You need to know a lot of information. But there's this spec called NDEF, and NDEF is NFC Data Exchange. It's a way to uh, read and write data on different types of tags so different devices can read it. It's kind of like a, a nice format so that it, 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 things work more consistently across devices. So. On an NFC tag, when you format it for NDEF, there's an NDEF message which has one or more records on it. And uh, each of those records 
there's some data about it. There's a TNF type name format, a type, a payload, and a record ID. The payload is the most important thing that we care about. That's the data that we want to read and write. The rest of the stuff on there is just telling us, the type tells us how to interpret the payload, the TNF tells us how to interpret the type. And that just repeats what I said. Um, so for the TNF type, there's a definitely, uh, there's like seven types there. And we're going to look at a couple of them. I think if we look at some examples, so for an empty record, there's a TNF type of empty. So it's just one byte goes on that says this is an empty record. If we wanted to write some text, it was a little more usable. We use a well-known type, a well-known TNF, and then our type is T. And then the payload gets encoded. It's not just the string, but it's the string with the language encoding. And then the first byte tells us how long the language encoding is. And each of the different types have a spec and all these rules for reading and writing them. We can also write URIs. The interesting thing about a URI is they use these prefixes, like HTTP colon slash slash is a prefix of three. And one of the reasons they do that is since there's a really small amount of data that you want to try to shorten everything down. And then today, uh, we'll be using my media records, which is basically like we're going to store, you can store JSON or any, basically anything you want to store in there. And you put a type on there similar like to uh, uh, MIME type on a web page. You're saying what type the data is, and then we'll interpret that data. So in the library we're going to be using, there's a lot, you can, you can create a new record, and new records, all, everything is stored as bytes on there, so you've got to deal with really low level stuff. The library has a bunch of helper methods to, that know these rules and code these rules and kind of take some of that work out. So you have to know less about NFC and you can just start messing with it. So a quick review out of all that stuff, the really important things to remember is an NDEF message has one or more records on it. And the NDEF record has a payload of data, the information we care about, and information describing that payload so that we know how to read and write that. So here's where we get to the hard, uh, fun stuff with the hardware. Um, there's two types of shields I've been using a lot. So this is the one I, I like a real lot. The first one I got was from Adafruit. It's their NFC shield. And uh, this one's good. It has a great antenna, so it has really good range on it. And then there's another one from Seed Studio. And uh, this one, it's got an interesting design where the antenna's separate, but uh, works pretty good too. So in order to drive that, there's um, a chip on those shields, which is a PN532 chip from NXP. And uh, there's a low-level driver for that. Um, the Adafruit board, they published their own driver for that, which I st first started using. And then the Seed Studio guys took that and modified the library so we can use the same low-level library with either of these shields. The difference between them is the Adafruit one by default does I to C, and the Seed one does SPI. Um, the Adafruit one can be switched to do that, but, but the, uh, the idea of having one underlying library is that we can have a lot more compatible code there that runs on both the shields. And then all those NDEF rules that we were talking about there, um, I built an Arduino library on top of there that uh, helps interpret NDEF. So you can be writing strings and it turns them into bytes. You have constants for the different TNF types and it makes it a lot easier to use. So that library is available on GitHub and it installs into your Arduino IDE. So the one kind of pain point in the library still is depending on which shield you're using, you need to have a lot of include lines here. So it's in the readme and it tells you what you need to do. But if you're using I to C, you got to import one way to do it. And if you're using SPI, you have to uh, do another one. Once you have your library included and you have an instance of NFC, they behave the same from that point on. So in your sketch, in a sketch, if you, hopefully uh, you guys know and when you've written Arduino, there's two things you need to do. You have your setup and you have your loop. Once you've included those headers in the setup, you just need to say NFC begin, which is like a lot of other libraries, and it tells the library to initialize. And then if you wanted to write a tag, um, we can basically Ask the, ask the library, hey, is there a tag present? Has a tag entered the field? If a tag enters the field, it'll go into this loop. We can get an instance of the message. We can add a text record. And then we say, just write that to the, uh, write that to the tag. And it's as simple as that to write data. If you remember, we said NDEF messages had more than one or more records. So you could add more records if you wanted. By default, the library supports four records. Um, 
on a message, but there's a uh, constant you can change if you want to uh, write more than that. Due to memory limitations, I lowered it down. And then when you want to read a tag, you use that same thing. You say, hey, is a tag present? Because you don't want to uh, call any of those other functions when the tag's not there. And uh, if a tag is present, we can just say read, which gives us this tag object. And then there's a helper method called print, which just dumps all the information out. Um, normally, in a real program, we'd want to do something more sophisticated. We'd want to look at the records and kind of see what was in there. But when we print it out, it just kind of, it's more debug than print. It just dumps out the contents of the tag there. So if we go over to the Arduino IDE, and this is uh, in the sample code that comes with the library that's called write tag. And uh, at the beginning, I have both the headers. And since we're using um, the Adafruit one, we're going to just use it as is. And instead of adding a URI record, we're going to use a tag for our next demo where we need a MIME media record. Well, you're going to watch my bad typing here. And then we're going to be controlling a string of LED lights. So uh, we're going to want to make a blue light, because we're going to pass in three colors, the red, green, and blue component. I'll explain that part a little bit more. So now we have the, um, let me save this and upload it. And we're crashing. Sorry, a little nervous writing code here. We need to give it a MIME type, which we're calling it text LED. Let's try this one more time. So we're uploading this code onto the uh, Arduino. And now it says that we found the reader. And I'll switch to the camera here. A little tough to show both of these, probably. So then if we take the card, I guess we're doing blue, so that would be the third tag. And if I hold the card over here, it's going to the demo. Oh, there we go. So it said, six, success, try reading this card with your phone. So one of the things I do a lot when I'm developing um, this software, I use the phone. I have some NFC code that runs there. So there's a reader here. So we just wrote 00255. So hopefully if we put this here. And all goes well. Hang on, let me restart this app. Bad day for demos. OK, so that's not cooperating. Let's try another sketch where we can uh, read the tag in. Sorry about that. So we have a read tag demo that comes with the library. We're going to upload that on here. Open the serial monitor again. And then if we read the tag here. Um, basically, the important part that comes out is the text LED is the MIME type that I gave it, and 00255 was the data that I gave it. So we're going to use that in our next demo. Oh, OK, I'm going to go right into that next demo. So the other demo is I have a Seed Studio Shield right here. And uh, this Seed Studio Shield is hooked up to a string of uh, LED NeoPixel lights from Adafruit. These are really cool lights. You can individually control all of them. We're going to do a pretty low-tech thing where we're going to just light the, whole, uh, light the whole strip up. So for this one, while we're uh, loading the sketch up, we basically have in the main loop of our program, uh, we loop through and we're setting the pixel color as we go through. And then every time we uh, write the strip of colors, we read the NFC tag. And in the read NFC tag, we go in and we limit it so we're only reading once a second. We basically say, hey, is there a tag there? If there's a tag, we get the tag. We get the message off the tag. and then. We check it. I make sure it's a my media tag and not some other tag. And if it is, I get the data off, and then we try to set the color. So these are some tags I created yesterday. If all goes well, this will work, and we can put this on here. 
And so this tag said 255.00, it lights it up red. Oh, and then it went white because of an error. We've got a green tag and a blue tag. And so this sketch here is about 100 lines of code with like very, very verbose kind of comments on what's going on. And it allows us to read and write. So also, I think uh, this is a type 2 tag in here. So I can't write it with the shields, but I should be able to read it. So I can turn it green or turn it blue. So one of the things to know about this is uh, I wrote a lot of code to do this. And I'm used to writing code for regular computers and phones. And the Arduino has such a tiny amount of memory, I'm using about half the memory with my library. So it's really, really easy to run out of memory. And you got to get kind of uh, creative with the sketches you're writing. Uh, in an earlier version of this, you could run on the Arduino Due. And uh, I'm hoping it runs on the Arduino Yoon, but I don't have one of those yet. So hopefully we can kind of use it. If you're doing a project where you're doing a lot more data, you may need a bigger, uh, a bigger processor with more RAM on it. The other thing a lot of people ask about is peer-to-peer. -peer. It would be really nice if I could take my phone and do the NFC right to the shield there. That's really tricky. Um, it uses, uh, we were using NDEF before. There's a couple other protocols, LLCP and SNAP. And um, those are where you need to get this going. There's some code um, that the guys from Seed Studio have worked on. And uh, it's called NFC Dev Shield. I think uh, Seed Studio had a blog post about that. It took some of the NDEF code I wrote and some of the LLCP code that a guy, uh, Mike Weir, wrote, kind of combined them together in a mashup. And uh, it almost works. Uh, I, it doesn't work good enough for me to demo. Um, so hopefully, we're going to keep working on that and making it better so that we can have exchange between the phones and the shields, because that makes a real nice, uh, real nice apps there. A few other things I've found very helpful is when I have an Arduino phone with me to do this development, because sometimes I'll write a tag and need to read it. Um, so these apps here, uh, the PhoneGap NFC Reader is a demo that goes with one of my other libraries. NXP Tag Writer and NFC Tag Info, very useful, uh, very useful apps for helping to develop the stuff. Here's a link. All these slides are going to be online. So if you care about the details, you can download the tech specs. It's going to fill out a license, and they let you have it. Um, and then also with uh, Tom Igo and Brian Jepson, I uh, wrote a book for uh, O'Reilly. It's called Beginning NFC. We talk a lot about using Arduinos. We talk about uh, NFC with PhoneGap, and uh, so it's on your phones, and with BeagleBone and Raspberry Pi. So that just went to the editor, so hopefully that'll be coming out soon in electronic, and then later in the fall uh, in print. So check that out. And uh, that's it for my presentation. I have some time to answer some questions. Um, the slides should be live online now. Um, and so there we go. Thank you guys very much. Any questions? All right. I'll be around after, too, if you guys uh, want to ask a question, not in front of everybody. Thank you.